Hi, this is Dr. Sam Lamb. I'm doing a description of uh, why cannulas for facial injections is so very important. And I'm going to tell you a, a brief history of, of how I came about using cannulas and the evolution of what cannulas I use. I want to state in advance that I have no financial affiliations with any of the companies that I'm mentioning, and nor do I want to disparage them. Part of what I'm, the benefit of this uh, short description is for the consumer, but also for my colleagues who are searching out the best uh, cannulas that uh, may help them in their efforts. First of all, what is a cannula? A cannula is a needle without a sharp end. So it's a blunt tip, as you see in the image that accompanies this video. And this cannula is very, very important when applying solid materials into the face, such as any injectable fillers or fat grafting. In this case, we're talking specifically about disposable cannulas used for facial injections using uh, off-the-shelf fillers, such as Restylane, Juvederm, etc. So uh, the cannula that is shown here is the current cannula that I prefer, and I'll tell you shortly of how I came about this uh, concept. And the one thing that is true is that I'm constantly evolving my thinking, and by a few months from now, or a year from now, I could have different ideas. And I think that's the important thing is someone that's very dedicated to one's profession and committed on a passionate level, that that person continues to evolve one's thinking and does not stay st uh, still because technology evolves, uh, thinking evolves, and I think all of these are very, very important. So let's first start out with something practical of why is a cannula so very important for a patient? I, I list a few things. Number one is safety. Safety is always the, the most important concern for someone. Why is, why is a cannula so much safer? Well, first of all, a cannula with a blunt tip allows you to inject without a significant risk. I always say signif significant because it's, you know, nothing is, uh, nothing's impossible. Um, because, you know, I always say a Martian could, could land on the, on the, uh, on the, on the ground. And, you know, it's, it's rare that anything could happen with a needle, but you want to take that chance of rarity and make it far, far less of near impossible. So uh, the problem with the with safety of using needles is that a needle injection with a solid material, now like Botox and Dysport, that's completely safe with the needle because it's a liquid. Um, but even then I do draw back and just make sure I'm not in a vessel. But with the cannula, uh, you are pretty safe from injecting into a uh, vessel. Um, it depends on what cannula you're talking about now, and uh, I'm going to go through some in my evolution what size cannula has proved to be the safest, at least in, in terms of current data and current thinking. Um, but the short answer is a 25 gauge. But basically, um, a cannula, first of all, is, is increases safety by a large margin, so that there's a very minimal to no chance of uh, injection into a vessel, which then would cause uh, issues like vision loss and necrosis, things like that, which are very frightening uh, for the consumer and, and, and uh, of course, very well should be. So I think that cannula injections are extremely safe, um, especially if you have the right cannula as a tool. So I, I advocate that. In fact, I just had a, a med spa um, set, is, is sending me a, a patient who has a necrosis uh, or, or part of his face is lost from use of a needle in his smile line or his nasolabial groove. So this is not something that should be taken lightly. Um, it is risky. Uh, do I use needles? Yes, I do. I use needles in very uh, limited incidences when I'm working with uh, areas that are intradermal, in other words, things that need to be lifted at the dermal level, such as the downturn of the, uh, of the mouth, uh, fine lines around the mouth, uh, but when I go deeper in the subcutaneous plane and I'm trying to accomplish uh, uh, very fine sculpting, especially around the eyes, there's nothing comparable to the use of a cannula. And that's, for example, underneath the eyelids, uh, around the top of the eyelids, the temple region, uh, the, the mid face, um, et cetera, even the lips. Uh, so I really believe cannulas add an incredible level of safety. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing with a cannula is that the discomfort level is far less. Um, because uh, you don't have to go in and out so many times, my cannula stays farther out and it's a longer cannula, which seems like it would be more uncomfortable. But actually, by residing under the tissues and rather than ha having short bursts of penetration through the skin, 
it makes it much more comfortable. So you ask, well, how do you get through the skin? Well, you use a needle for entry, but then the product delivery and the placement is all done through a cannula technique. So this is placed far enough away from the place I'm injecting that I can actually reach multiple zones uh, through a single entry. Now, it, it doesn't mean that I'm th using a single entry for the whole face because the way I design a face is very complex. So using a cannula, um, adds f to summarize safety number one number two comfort the third thing that a cannula offers here is a potential for much more accuracy I can I, I, I just can sit th let that cannula sit there and fill and see exactly what I want whereas there's a lot of obstruction when a needle is being injected for a few reasons number one the needle's short so you're very close and the, the actual the needle weight can cause uh, distortion at least in my hands and I always say in my hands because everyone is different in terms of their capacities and what works for them. But using a long cannula allows me to have a much more accurate fill. And the last thing that's very important is potentially much lower risk of bruising. And again, the reason for it is if you think about, especially around the eye area, if you're entering very, very close to the eye, eyelid area, uh, you know, with a needle, there's a much higher chance of a bruise. In fact, I had a patient of mine just two weeks ago that had gone somewhere else and had significant bruising uh, that lasted months. So this is a, a known risk with needles and something very, very uh, concerning to me in terms of uh, lo lo the length of uh, bruising potential. So cannulas offer safety, comfort, accuracy, and reduction of bruising. For all of you uh, intrepid listeners that want to continue to hear sort of the evolution of what kind of cannulas have worked for me uh, over the last few years, sit tight, here it comes. So the reason this uh, this little... Uh, description came to my mind was I had a gentleman from Beverly Hills coming down to my office uh, this past Friday and, and we had a discussion and and uh, I explained what I was using and why I was using it. And I think it may be interesting uh, again not only for the consumer but also for the, my colleagues out there. So I started um, in October 2010. I remember that date to me because it is for me uh, a period of time of transitioning from the dark age, as I like to call it, because it really was. Prior to October 2010, when I was using uh, sharp needles for uh, product delivery, I just, I really find that because of all the reasons I've enumerated, it truly was the dark ages. And I started, um, I remember getting this email and seeing this email uh, from one of the representatives and it said, try this out. I, I immediately a bulb lit up in my mind. I said, this is gonna be a, a new era. And I, and I totally believe that it has been. I started using Dermascope products um, and again, no affiliation with any companies I'm uh, mentioning. And the Dermascope product really had some issues uh, in my estimation, unless they've evolved since then, I have not gone back and evaluated. But the lure locks were not of a caliber that I wanted in addition, the uh, steel was not uh, what I would, would have pre preferred. I've always used a 27 gauge needle for many years because it gave me the flexibility of minimal discomfort, less potential bruising, uh, very accurate injections. And that was corroborated with some of the early safety studies that said that the 27 gauge was the, uh, was the safest um, compared to like a 30 gauge uh, cannula that could act like a needle. So I used 27 gauges for many, many years without issues. Um, and I switched over to the TSK, TSK 27 gauge and found it to be much higher caliber in steel as well as caliber in uh, the lure lock. The lure lock is the point where it attaches to the uh, syringe. And the reason that's so important is you don't want to get pop-offs where you're actually losing product. Uh, and I was very happy with this, and I moved over to soft fill um, probably in the last few years. I had a lot of good good results with soft fill. In particular, um, I really, really enjoyed uh, the use of soft fill at the 27 gauge uh, cannula, but found uh, at the 27 gauge, sometimes it could bend you know, a little bit too much, so that made things a little bit harder to use. Uh, and the lure lock, after talking to the CEO, he was very generous in, in making the lure lock considerably better. So I, uh, I found the steel to be even better than the TSK, and I found that the lure lock to be comparable. The TSK was, for me, the industry standard in terms of the quality. I had switched over also to the TSK Steriglide 27 gauge to try it out. The Steriglide is a sharper tip, and I have a lot of my colleagues that advocate the use of a uh, 27 gauge Steriglide cannula. Um, in my estimation, in my hands, it was way too sharp, and it acted like a needle and caused 
uh, significant bruising. And I only did about a few patients, but it was enough for me to really conclude that uh, it wasn't the right one for me. Um, so again, if you're using a, a Steriglide, you know, that's fantastic for me. Um, it, it just didn't really work well. In the last couple of years, I migrated uh, to 25 gauge cannulas uh, using the soft fill variety, and the reason was that some of the more published, more recently published data said that the safety limit at the 25 gauge cannula was really uh, unparalleled compared to the 27 in terms of uh, risk of intravascular injection. So I moved everything to 25 gauge uh, cannulas. Uh, 25 gauge cannulas had a benefit of uh, the fact that they. They really didn't bend like the 27 gauges, so they were much more durable in placement, especially holding up after a, a complete face injection. Sometimes with the 27, I would, I would have to switch over because it, it would bend too much and I'd have to use a new one. Um, the 25 gauge, again, increased safety, but there was some discomfort with the cannula, to, um, and I may have had a little more bruising. One of my colleagues out of Chicago has actually said there's less bruising with larger cannulas. In my hands, I found that, the, that there was a little more bruising potential. Um, I've switched, and a little bit more discomfort, I switched recently um, to the TSK Classic 25 gauge and found so far to, it, to offer the best of both worlds in terms of the, uh, the, the size, the outer diameter is actually closer to 27 and the inner bore is closer to 25. So it acts like a 27, gives me the durability of a 25, the safety of a 25. The lure lock is very, very uh, strong. Um, and the tip is still blunt enough that there's no problems and there's less discomfort. So, so far, at least in 2017, what I've noted is that uh, the TSK 25 gauge classic gives me uh, the trifecta of safety, comfort, um, and quality. So uh, hopefully this video, excuse me, this well, video slash audio recording is helpful for both the consumer as well as the, uh, my colleague who, is at, who have asked me on many regards, many times when I see them in, con in conventions or email, what product I use and why. Uh, so this is really, um, again, my current thinking, but my thinking continues to evolve uh, monthly, if not uh, you know, weekly, as I think and rethink everything that I do.